What's going on guys? So today we're back working on 57 Chevy, the giveaway 57 Chevy at 57,000 subscribers. We're giving this thing away dead free, so if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and tell a friend. Today's a big one. We got the Fitech setup, came in the mail today. So I just got off work and I want to see what this is all about. So this here is the 600 horsepower kit. Uh, man, Fitech, they, uh, they stepped up huge on this. So do me a favor, send them another email, uh, go follow them on Instagram, shoot a message thanking them because this is huge. So what this kit is, it's got this little reservoir kind of tank thing with a high pressure pump in it. So the idea is you just run the standard, you run the mechanical uh, fuel pump, or in our case, we're going to run an electrical, uh, electric pump from the back. To fill this, it's got, I'll do a little check-in, but I believe uh, an in and a return, and then a high pressure feed over this here Fitech unit. And inside it's got the controller, it's got some miscellaneous wiring, I don't know, O2. But it looks like it should be pretty simple. The only thing that's going to be probably a pain will be the uh, fuel system. So I got to figure out what I want. But again, uh, hot rod fuel hose, he's going to step up big time and help us out, help you guys out. So I might do something temporary for the time being just to get it running and driving. Uh, I'm stoked on this. Luckily, I was just watching the Welder Up channel uh, last week and old Steve Darnell was putting one of these on his 57 Chevy. So uh, it's basically Welder Up here. So we should set like a race or something like that, eh? But, uh, yeah, that's how it's going to work. So I'm probably going to back this thing up just a little bit. We'll get the carburetor off. Put that in the old bin. But man, check this out. Look how nice it looks. So we'll yoink that off. Maybe we'll read the instructions. We'll see. But uh, when I did the other fuel injection kit, it seemed pretty simple. I mean, it's plug and play. I believe it's just going to have uh, temperature... O2 will need power and it'll have its little uh, connections and stuff. They did give some fuel line, so I'm sure that's probably enough to go from the tank high pressure to the uh, the unit itself. And I believe you know one has to be in and one will be out. Maybe I'm not really too sure. Oh, maybe to return here even. I'll have to check that out. Maybe you just deadhead this. I'll do a little research and see exactly because this might be really easy to hook up. I can figure it out. You guys can. But man, this is going to be. Uh, this is a pretty slick little upgrade for your guys 57 Chevy. So of course, they get a big sticker on the window. Alright, I'll start doing some reading and bring you back once I figure a little more about this thing. Alright, so I'm doing a little bit of reading. And it looks pretty simple. So here is the schematic for this uh, fuel delivery kit. So it looks like you actually block off the return on the uh, Vitek itself. And you're going to run the return from the tank or from the this tank so it looks pretty simple it's going to go from the fuel tank into a pre-filter into the pump round into the intake and then return back to the fuel tank uh the car tank now that's kind of the way it recommends to do it over here this is in the actual uh throttle body we're going to call it kit uh pump filter command center fuel filter again into the unit so, seems pretty easy. Tri fives do have a vent, so you uh, 57s do actually. Five and six don't. So I could tap the return into that, but it actually came with this cool little kit. So I'm gonna use. That. I'm not too sure. So it's a little fitting, and what you do is you take it all apart, and it's basically a crush fitting. So the bolt will go on the other side. You end up tightening it up, and this will kind of crush down after you drill a hole in a tank. We got to take a tank out for that, so I'm not too sure if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to use the uh, the vent. But I don't have any hose for that, anyways. So I think what I'll do is start installing the unit on the car because I will have fuel up because I'm just going to basically, for the time being, use the existing fuel line that would feed the carburetor, which will feed this unit, and then that'll do high pressure. This needs 12 volts switched. Obviously, that'll need a bunch of stuff. Grounds are really important. I read that on the internet. And then all I really have to worry about is the the return from this unit. But I can get some parts for that tomorrow to get it temporary going. Uh, while I wait, because uh, I'm going to send an email to my buddy there at uh, Hot Rod Fuel Hose. And he'll uh, style you guys with uh, a new pump 
and some sort of fancy fittings and I'm sure pressurated hose and all sorts of stuff I'd be too cheap to buy if it was my own thing. But for you guys, I'm sparing no expense. Well, I'm saying no expense, but, but they really care. So that's the plan. Get this thing uh, backed up a little bit because I actually crashed in my welder and a jack stand. But uh, back her up, rip it apart, and at least put it on there so it'll look, uh, it'll look stylish. Uh, all right. Well, I've been doing a little noodle scratching. Danielle came out to support. She's using a new vacuum as a cup holder. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, clean up the mess when you spill it. So here's what I've decided. This trick little unit here, it can go anywhere you want. It's got a bracket on the bottom, so you can put it on the, the side or whatever, so you can mount it to the inner fender well, the firewall, the core support, all that stuff. Now, what I'm thinking, is the fuel system and all that's already on this side, I have the battery there. I have this splash apron in the front. I was just gonna put it right there. And then I'll just run my lines through this uh, little core support, whatever, with a few grommets. And then the fuel line can just go... Like Wallace and Gromit? Like Wallace and Gromit. That's what I'm thinking anyways. So all the fuel systems on that side, leave it that side. It's all away from the exhaust. Makes my life a thousand times easier. And, I mean, really, if you guys want to move it, I'll put the instructions in the trunk. But that's how I'm going to do it. So, we'll get to pulling this carburetor apart, or off, because it's useless, antiquated junk now. And, uh, step into the future. Look how gorgeous this looks. This is absolutely lipstick on a pig. Like it's crazy, but I love it. Oh, so. I thought you were about to pan to me there and I was not gonna be impressed. I was like, oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> So, um, it says open any intakes. This is a spread bore intake and I just use a spread bore gasket. That should be fine, I guess. Worst case, I'll buy an adapter, but I think it's okay. The connectors are so easy on this. It has one, which is O2. This is coolant temperature sensor. The only thing we're gonna have here, it has a mechanical gauge, which I like mechanical gauges, but because these heads, they're not drilled for anything. So I'll either have to get a T in there, which I think is ugly, or maybe a water neck with a second one. Just, I don't know. The gauge is there, it's kind of cool, so I'll do that. And then these two connections are all I need because the computer is actually on the unit. It's got fuses and everything. One connection here, this is what's going to control the handheld. There's four wires here. Uh, switched power, tack, and a ground, and then one's for an electric fan, which we're not going to use. This is your main power in directly from the battery. And this orange one is going to actually, it's meant to run the, the fuel pump, which we're going to use to run that fuel pump. It's just that easy, guys. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. I'm gonna start kind of putting a few nuts and bolts on this thing. Uh, it's everything on the back of this. I guess I could have shown you on the actual unit instead of showing you any instructions. Got that nearly as fun. But it's got, it tells you exactly what to use for vacuum. So for the booster, for transmission, for distributor and all that stuff. This one does have a bit of a goofy thing because it has vacuum wipers. Uh, but it is teed together with the transmission, I believe. So I might just have to kind of make that together into a T and then be done with it. So you want constant vacuum for that, ported to the distributor. PCV, I don't even know if this thing has got just to that intake, whatever, because it's an old style motor. So I'll run that in there. Cap the rest. And yeah, it's, uh, it's slick and easy. So I'm going to uh, bolt this down run a few wires, do a few things, make sure I'm happy with everything. And then my only real concern is gonna be hooking up the return line, which is pretty minimal. 
All right, guys, well, check this out. So I'm kind of halfway done the install. It's been about 10 minutes. Uh, I put in the temperature sender. It gave you a long cable, obviously. It's probably supposed to go in the head. This we're not going to use because that is for if you go with a like an MSD or a, a variable timing setup, which we don't have. These two wires are the controller. So I just got to run it through the firewall. Very simple. And then these are the connections at the front. So again, one's going to go battery, one's going to go to the pump. And then we're only using three of these. And then plumb in the fuel. That's it. It gets unbelievably simple. Unbelievable. So I'm going to anchor this down uh, permanently, run a few wires, uh, run my battery wire and stuff like that. And I got to try and find some vacuum line because that's my only real concern I'm going to have. And linkage. I guess I gotta figure out the linkage. Hopefully it'll just... Huh, I figured it out. Look at that. That was easy. So yeah, everything's gonna work. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. <laughs> All right. All right, so here we go. Uh, I've got my, whatever, high pressure fuel setup all bolted in. So the one line here is the feed, and this is the high pressure line. This will be the return, but I got to get some hose for that. Uh, very simple. This one is just regular low pressure or whatever, because uh, it's just going to be running off the electric fuel pump. It's kind of temporary because, again, the hot rod fuel hose is going to hook me up there. I just drilled a couple of holes and ran it through these rubber grommets. I got to get another grommet there for the return. I'll put it at the bottom probably. The feed is going to go around and just going to go into the, the unit right there, but it does require this... Uh, fancy filter and I want to just get like a p-clamp or something to hold it to the, either the, the fender well or battery box or something like that just so it's nice uh, otherwise it's kind of just needing the wiring hooked up and I got to jack it up and weld in or clamp in what we want to do for the O2 sensor and then run a few wires under the dash but I'm waiting on wire care it's supposed to be here tomorrow maybe or the day after for their kit and I'd like to terminate this thing with all the fancy wire care stuff. So we'll see. See how tomorrow goes. But I'd really like to use all that fancy junk for you guys. Instead of just redoing work for myself. So I might just clean up some of the junk in there. Make it look a little nicer. Root all the hoses. Run the return. Do a few things like that. And maybe I'll hook it up temporarily. But I'll probably just wait for that stuff. So that's from Liam for tonight. Uh, yeah. See you guys tomorrow what's going on guys next day so what are we doing today uh after work i picked up a few things i got some vacuum line a few t's and stuff so i can clean that up so the cobbled together mess it has uh i got some fuel line to run the return back to the tank uh but i think at this point this thing's got to come up in the air and i got to put on you know get the o2 and run the return line so that's an up in the air job and I might pull the tank to put in that return line. Uh, wire care stuff showed up today. So I'm not gonna go too crazy on it. Uh, they gave me some shirts and all that. We might give some of those away. Bunch of fancy zip ties. Got some uh, heat boots for the spark plugs on these things that's close to the headers. Shrink wrap, strippers, bunch of fancy connectors, and all that sort of stuff. So we'll do a full video on all that stuff once we're under the dash, because it's gonna be a nightmare. But for now, we're going to finish up this EFI setup. So yeah, like I said, up in the air, O2 in, run the fuel line. I think it's all has to happen underneath. Then a little bit of wiring and yeah, it should bark to life in theory. All right, I'll get this thing up in the air and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, cars up on stands. So I'll show you what I've done up top. Uh, I've got the return line uh, just really roughly run now again this is just regular carburetor fuel hose because I, this is kind of temporary uh the return and the feed because i'm talking with uh hot rod fuel hose and they're going to send over some sweet line and a proper electric pump so my junk won't be on here forever but this will get it running and just kind of get the vibe of it i've got the o2 sensor in i decided not to weld it and follow what the instructions do where it's clamped on if you guys ever want to move it or do whatever, it's literally two clamps. Super easy. The last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the return in the tank. I think I can do it with the car with the tank in the car. That's what I'm going to try. And I want to use, ultimately I just want to use this thing. I think this is awesome. So this is the bung 
and uh, it's threaded on the end for just a regular 6AN fitting and I have a fitting for it I believe but what you do you're gonna drill a hole you put this in you're gonna tighten up this bolt with this uh, gasket on the back side and I assume what it's gonna do is mushroom in sandwich it and you're just gonna put it at the top and that will be your return into a tank so you can make any tank with the return that's always the problem with these things uh, people are you know putting it into the the sender and soldering it and I've done that myself it sucks this looks super easy I assume it won't leak it looks like they're doing it on a curve of tank even uh, so that's what we're gonna do I'm gonna clean it up real quick with the roll lock try to avoid any sparks so I don't blow myself up and go from there underneath the car I guess I could show you what I've been doing I haven't been too lazy Ugh. so this is the O2 so it's actually just got a little gasket with the plate and two uh, two hose clamps pretty simple uh, this is the line like I said this is gonna be the return line so I'm simply just gonna zap strap it to the uh, the feed lines uh, that I already have uh, all the way to the back it'll have lots of room around the exhaust won't be any issues and at the back of the cell I'll drill that hole put that bung in and hook it up and that should be it for the fuel system this is unbelievably easy now like I said once we well, I'll redo it with the proper line front to back and you can see my wiring for the uh, fuel pump that's I left it real long as I know I was going to put it so I'll wrap that up and tie it away but once the proper uh, fuel pump goes in I'll trim that up and make it real nice but that's it here I'll get that done I'll show you how it turned out and then we can get back under the hood hook up some vacuum lines and start doing the wiring and maybe have it run all right so i just want to show you guys this little returning so i think it's pretty neat whoops so that's how it works super slick so i got the little uh return line hooked up to it uh under the hood all the fuel is done so now all I gotta do is run some vacuum lines. So I'm gonna redo them all. I broke down and uh, spent some bucks on vacuum line, like nine dollars, and some new T's. So everything will be done properly instead of uh, I think it's just got like fuel line and I don't even know what it's got going on under there. Pipe fittings. So I'll change all that, make it proper, and I've started running the wiring. Uh, yeah, pretty simple. I got to run the controller under the or through the firewall, just the wiring for it. And then, like I said, it's uh, a ground uh, to the battery, and then these three wires. And that should be it. So I'll get that all kind of taken care of. Come back and we'll see what this uh, see what it looks like, see what this controller is. Uh, well, I've wasted another night. It's dark, it's I don't know, 11 or 11.30. Uh, I was trying to wire this thing up and, and you know screw around and kind of half-ass it. The battery was dead, so I got enough that I pressurized the system. And but you know what? I'm just I was doing it wrong, and and ultimately I don't want to mess with it. I, you know if it's gonna be a, a tuning process and all that, I don't want to be doing that at midnight. Uh, I'm already on thin ice with the neighbors, so I'm gonna leave it there for tonight. It sure looks good. I didn't have any leaks. Uh, the pump was going everything was good so i'm happy i said i just think uh tomorrow afternoon will be the way to go also i should probably drop this thing off stands it's a pain trying to reach in the stupid motor and all that clean up a little bit take my time for once and do it properly so that's where i'm leaving it for now make sure you guys are watching this video tell your friends i was looking uh welder up they did their thing and they got like twenty-five thousand or thirty thousand views we got to smash that because we're going to kick their ass right so tell all your friends, get them to watch this video. Let's see what happens. Because your 57 Chevy's way better than Steve Darnell's. What's going on, guys? Next day. Same shirt next day. Uh, so I've been doing some work. Cars, obviously, down on the ground. I was going around and, oh, single guy dinner. Olives in a solo cup. Danny's out tonight. Um... Did a bunch of wiring, so I got all these fancy wire care connectors. You all crimp them and then heat shrink them down. Looking good. Uh, I think yesterday I did it, or maybe it was today, whatever. 
But I did prime the system for fuel. I cranked it on. There's no leaks, so stoked on that. I haven't fired it. So I'm just going to clean a few things off, make sure nothing will fall. Eh, we'll just wing it. There's a little bit of programming on the instructions. It might be in there, actually. A little handheld programmer tells you to do it. I just hooked it all up. So, yeah, we'll go in there. And we'll walk through that. Hopefully it'll just be a couple of boop, boop, boop buttons and it'll fire right up. All right, so we're inside the car. I got you on the tripod. Hopefully it works out. We'll just turn this thing key on. This is the little controller. It recommends initial setup, setup engine. So it has some presets in here. Uh, we're going to change this to 327. Gives you an option of cam, mild to wild. Uh, I guess it starts at two. We'll probably leave it there. Uh, rev limiter, we're not gonna worry about that. We'll have a 700 RPM warm. And it's got some options I don't know about. But that's kinda where it wants to start. We'll do a send to ECU. Then there was a few other options which we're not gonna worry about. What was gauges? This is going to show you everything it'll do. So you just kind of turn it on for large and it'll pop up. So we're going to want the tack. Let's do coolant. Uh, what else do we have? Battery voltage. Oh, you know if this thing even charges. So we'll just do that. So it's got 12 volts. We're at 78 degrees. Let's just see what happens here. So it's hovering around 900 or 1000 as we're cold. Doesn't really look like we're charging though. You guys see how easy that was? Just turn the key and it just went. That's amazing. So then you can scroll through and look at all sorts of stuff, whatever you want. I don't know what temperature it will uh, calm down the idle a little bit. Definitely sounds like there's a cam. Well, I'm going to let this thing idle a little bit. And uh, once it settles down, I'll bring you back. How about that? All right, well, I'm hanging outside a little bit. Uh, as long as I have this thing running, because it's just kind of in and out of the garage and stuff like that. Now it's got proper fuel system, proper EFI. So the motor's burning all the old grease off, so it stinks a little bit. Definitely sounds like it's got a bit of a cam. So that's exciting. It's got right around 30 pounds of oil pressure or so at idle. You can see the it's kind of doing its thing up and down. 750 is like what I put it at. AFR 13 and a half, 165, but we're not charging. But it is responsive now. So it's pretty cool. Like I said, it's a little a little hazy up here. They burn all the old junk off and stuff, so yeah. I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning up, and then maybe we'll back her out, I don't know. Maybe we'll try the exhaust cutouts now that it's actually idling kind of cool. See what it sounds like with a bit of a open headers that idle. I'll finish this video off, it was a good one. I'm stoked. All right, so here's how we're gonna end this sucker off. I hooked up the cutouts. Uh, I'd love to take it for a ride, but there is no lights in this thing, and I don't want to risk it. So we're going to fire it up, see what it sounds like with the, uh, the cutouts open there. Bear with me. Come on. Just that easy. Ready? Guys, 
EFI installed. This thing's ready to go. So, I'm not gonna lie, the wheels just showed up today. So I'm gonna have to take those in, get the uh, wheels and tires switched over. So I'm gonna use those tires on your brand new wheels. You're welcome. And then pile of wiring. So wire care, all that stuff came. So we're gonna work on that next. Got all the lights working, uh, ignition, all that stuff. Should be pretty simple. Uh, there's not a lot. It is a rat test under the dashboard, but what are you gonna do? It's how it is. So as always, uh, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. 57,000 subscribers, we're giving this car away. So make sure you keep telling all your uh, your buddies and stuff like that, because I'm ready to give this sucker away. Hopefully at the end of the month, I'll be able to kind of drive it around a little bit. We'll enjoy it. And then she's going away. Oh, look. Oh, this is embarrassing. Supporting the, we're both wearing the same shirt. That's weird. Uh, one of us is gonna have to change, and it's not gonna be me. All right. <laughs> tell your friends, let's give this thing away. We're getting there, right? See you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye, Tech. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave it here for tonight. No, right, that was a terrible one, yeah. Here we go. Uh, here we are. How's it going? What?